Um, it's really good to be here. Good morning. Uh, this is Copperstone Resources. Uh, we're a mineral exploration company. Uh, we're engaged in Sweden looking for copper gold resources uh, for the future, trying to uncover and unlock the, the potential of the country. Um, so we're a multi-diverse uh, uh, team these days. Uh, we are not just uh, Swedish, as you can hear. Uh, personally, I'm from South Africa. Some of my colleagues are, are here too. They're also from South Africa. And, uh, but I have been in Sweden for uh, around about eight years now um, and working extensively on this particular project uh, for the last five years, I would say now. So, uh, forgive my English, although I have been here a while, my Swedish is not really good enough to make this delivery. So, Copperstone Resources, uh, this is a, uh, an attempt to give a little bit of an update where we stand technically, uh, what we've been able to achieve, this, uh, particularly this last year. Um, uh, so, just running through, uh, as you all know, <laughs> Exploration is a high-risk business. Uh, we cannot guarantee very much. So we really are in the business of selling adventure, uh, as we would say. So the, the, why stop, the why Copperstone case, and I think uh, in my time since I've been in Sweden, I've had this uh, insight as to what can become of our project up in northern Sweden. And uh, I guess the, the headline of really what we're trying to do here is to discover something significant. Not something small, not something on a company scale, something that can uh, contribute to the, to the growth of the country. We're looking for a new copper mine, or a copper gold mine. And uh, if you want to make uh, uh, such claims uh, and have such initiatives, uh, one really needs to be targeting the big deposits. So we look for a type of a deposit called a porphyry copper, uh, such types are mined around the world uh, very successfully in South America, in North America, in Indonesia, in Australia. Um, and that really is our headline. So it's, uh, it sounds quite complicated. The word porphyry really is just a textual term that we use for the particular type of rock that causes these phenomena. Um, and we are making great progress, let's say, in piecing together the dynamics of such a large system present here in uh, northern Sweden. And uh, we're not the only one. Um, we have an address. So I'm just going to run through some details relative to porphyry copper and, uh, and how we foresee that we are on the right track. But what you can look forward to uh, is uh, that we will be drilling this deposit. That's what geologists do. We make speculations as where things are in the ground and, and then we drill them. So. We've been doing some drilling work uh, throughout this year already, and even in previous years, I think it was 2015, we started with some core drilling, uh, making steps towards this discovery, and that will continue. Uh, and the good news is we're not here today to raise money, per se, because we have just recently completed a, a, a new emission to, uh, for 30 million crowns that you probably read about. So we have the means right now to do that. Um, and we also have the right people on board as well. We've got a, a, a very competent team of scientists, and consultants, and uh, we've taken some time this year to create a, more of a structure for the company that can effect this kind of exploration initiative. Um, and, and me as well, I guess. I, I've done a lot of things in my life. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur. I've ran consulting companies in South Africa that grew to cover most of Africa, actually, and I've been involved in all forms of uh, this business, from exploration through, through the engineering, uh, resource development phases, uh, the, the feasibility parts of these kind of studies, and I've also been a lot involved with actual operations and building of new mines. So I was also a consultant to Barrick Gold, if you know that company, uh, in uh, Central Africa. So. I have a vision for the long term here. This is not a, a short-term uh, uh, initiative by any means. Uh, and, and probably what's on everybody's lips relative to our company has been the, uh, the long outstanding issue of the Eva concession, uh, which is a small 30, 34 hectare mining concession that was awarded uh, to the company subject to uh, 
uh, an objection period up until the 15th of December. So we're, we're dealing with that and how that fits into the bigger picture, and it's really positive news for this company to have that now. So the, just where we are, uh, we're situated up uh, about 100 kilometers uh, west-northwest of Sheleftio, uh, literally in the middle of nowhere. The closest town to us is Glomestresk, uh, and the largest regional town uh, would be uh, Arvizjar. So the project is actually situated in Norderbotten, very close to the southern boundary of Norderbotten. Um, uh, and we base our operations out of a small village called Marlo. And Marlo is the home ground of uh, the geological survey in the north, where all the, uh, the drilling and all the samples and, and what have you are dealt with. So uh, as you can see, our nearest neighbor is Borleden. Uh, they have been involved in this uh, neck of the woods for approximately 80 years now, since the 1920s when discoveries were first made. So we are closely situated to Boliden, but uh, we're doing something slightly different to them, I guess. Our market, uh, the public, and how you see us, and how you review us, and the value that you put on us, has been tremendous this last uh, couple of years, actually. So this is a a snapshot of the, uh, the growth of the company. It's uh, somewhat volatile, reporting to certain events and how the company's been developing, but notwithstanding, you can see there's an upward transition. We are uh, around 242 million shares now floated after the recent emission, which was a, a private issue that we did uh, a few months ago. And uh, yeah, we're around uh, 500 million market cap. So that's the company, and the team of people that are involved uh, in the company on the two levels. Basically, we have a board of directors underneath myself, and you can see that's my usual look, by the way. Uh, this business of a, a suit and a tie, uh, well, that's me normally. And we have Nicholas uh, Lufgren, Michael Matson, who's our chairman, and uh, Bjorn Israelison, and that's the executive uh, board of directors that runs this business. And uh, all three gentlemen uh, to the right of me there are also uh, uh, investors in the company as well. So we have a good, uh, a good profile, let's say, at that level. Um, and then we have a, a, an international team of guys that work with me. Uh, Dave Dodd on the far right, he's here in the audience with me today. Um, Maurice Zongo from Burkina Faso. He's a man that I, knew, I know well, and he's a really good geologist, and he's helping with the operations up in Marlow at the moment, which has grown significantly to five people. But in Marlow, that's, that's quite a big thing to say, to have a company that small, but in a very remote location. It's uh, big news for them. So looking at the regional map on the, on the left, you can see the approximate position, and uh, you can see on the right, uh, a map of all the drill holes, um, and it, it really is a, it's a long story of exploration that on this particular property started back in 1971 by Boliden, uh, and they drilled uh, approximately 11,000 meters of core drilling, very shallow, um, and then the major initiative was taken by Lundin Mining um, in the mid-2000s, and they added a further 20-odd thousand meters. So. When I inherited this project or started to, do, to develop this project on behalf of Copperstone as a consultant in those days, uh, I was uh, tremendously excited about the volume of information that I had at my disposal. And, uh, and, and what did that really mean? And, and was there anything about what I was seeing in that data that could be different from my predecessors? And the, uh, the, the, there is one thing for sure about this property is there, a, is there a pointer on this device? Yes, there is. Uh, we, what we have found is that, that throughout all of these drill holes, there is a, what we call a metal zonation pattern. And then in the south, it's very zinc rich, and in the north, it's very copper rich. And the question is why? What does that really mean? So we started to examine the property on a, uh, on a bigger scale, trying to look for uh, uh, potentially the, uh, the part of a system that would be creating such a zonation. So this was very important for us. Uh, geologists also need to also put their projects in terms of 
uh, plate tectonic models. And you, you, you would wonder why that is important, but if you look at the distribution of copper mines on the planet today, they have a particular uh, setting. Uh, if, you, if you read the news this morning, what's going on in Bali, uh, and the major eruption that is taking place, literally as we speak, um, this, this is particular to a, a junction on the, on the Earth's surface where uh, there is activity, uh, modern-day activity. So this is what we call the, the plate tectonic setting, and it's very important to find the ancient versions uh, to be able to reason out why we would believe that such a, uh, a system may exist. Um, and also it's important to have some sort of an address that relative to other people that may have found similar uh, deposits. If you're the very first, it's, a, it's really difficult. And as we know, uh, north of us is Aitik uh, and also the lava uh, deposit, both of them owned by Boliden. Uh, <clears throat> and for, for many reasons, these can be described as porphyry-style mineralizations. So we have the proximity to other uh, projects. And uh, we also have to be able to have the right techniques and the skills on board to, to look for these things in a competent, uh, cost-efficient and uh, time-efficient way. Uh, you don't want to take 10 years to do this. It's not, that's not interesting to, to the investment community. So we need the right competencies in the company to do this as well, too. This is, a, on the left, uh, I think the, the idea of comparison using other uh, projects around the planet that have been successful. Bingham Canyon, these are two American examples. The point of the slide is to demonstrate that you have this zonation pattern around porphyry-style systems. And they are often many, many kilometers in size, sometimes uh, tens of kilometers if you consider the full effect of the alteration halo. So just looking at a couple of drill holes at a small area, you can miss this kind of thing. So it's very, very important that we, uh, that we understand these zonation patterns very carefully. Um, I would say that uh, the Copperstone project is almost for sure, uh, oh, there's the pointers here somewhere, it's, it's this kind of arrangement where we have an inner copper system and an outer zinc system. Okay, so looking at the data that we've been able to generate uh, or to summarize, uh, both from the historic drilling and also from the, uh, the work that we've been doing, uh, you can see th these are hundreds of numbers. Unfortunately, we have loads and loads of analytical results. To, we analyze in three dimensions with some particular software, and we're trying to uh, illuminate uh, these uh, metal zonation patterns. So looking in the north of our project, uh, what we call Grindleden Hill or Grindleden South, you can see that there is no zinc in the north, but there are pretty good copper values, um, some of them over a spectacular length. Uh, 100 meters of mineralization is, is really quite something. Um, it's not world-class yet, it's not defined as a resource, but uh, this, this is a, clearly a, a data set that is supporting the notion that there is a connective here, there is a bigger system at play, and long before we uh, start just focusing on the, uh, the Eva area, which is in the south, uh, which is the, the, the concession application that's been approved now by the mining inspector, subject to the uh, this period of waiting. Um, it'll come into full legal force without objection on the 15th, 16th of December. So there is clearly a pattern developing. As you can see, there's more zinc grades here in the south at Eva. So that's just a, a snapshot of uh, the kind of numbers that we got. And these, bearing in mind that uh, ITIC is, has a grade, okay, it's an operating grade, a mine grade. Uh, of around about 0.25% uh, copper, copper equivalent, maybe up to 0 0.4, 0 0.5, depending on the gold uh, that comes through in any of the other metals. So you can see from the numbers relative to copper that we got some pretty good grades, uh, particularly in the north of the project, over reasonable length. So, but this is the exploration data, remember. This is not the resource. So there's not yet significant amount of drilling yet at all to define what the overall grade is going to be or what the overall size of this is going to be in time. We don't know that uh, as of yet. 
Um, we like to plot these things in three dimensions just to show ourselves what it looks like. This is just a, a, a snapshot of a piece of software that we use in Micromine. Um, but this is now just focusing on the Eva Svart Leiden area, which is kind of in the south of the project. And uh, you can see that there is a, uh, well, there's a content of gold around Eva, but there is a significant more a significantly larger amount of copper at Svart Leiden, and there has to be a reason for that. So we've been working on this in the last year now, um, and that's where we started drilling um, earlier this year. You might remember that we have drilled three long holes um, in, this, uh, uh, in this middle ground, uh, trying to discover what the, the reasons for this are. And uh, if you move on to the, uh, to the gold values, you can see there's a greater amount of gold present in Eva relative to Swart Leiden. And these are not exact boundaries, so there are obviously a few that kind of uh, cross the boundaries here. But you can see that there is a greater amount of gold. And gold is normally a metal that you will find further out in a, in a porphyry system. Uh, the inner parts of it, you will, you will generally get a, a credit. But further out, you can get what we call epithermal mineralization. And uh, there is every belief that the, the Eva style of mineralization is more related to epithermal as opposed to the porphyry system. And, uh, Lastly, the, the zinc. Uh, again, you can see there's a, there's a mix. So putting all of this data together, you can also see that there is a depth limit to the amount of knowledge here. So the, the long holes that we've drilled uh, go underneath us, and uh, we've, been, as I say, been able to piece together now the elements of these intrusions and the plate tectonic model, if you like, or our genetic model that links all of this stuff together which is cartooned. <laughs> it's very difficult to have anything less at this stage because we haven't yet done all of the drilling work. But here is a, here is a graphic that basically indicates where the, the main power po point of the whole model really lies in the discovery of what's known as a porphyry copper deposit. And on the periphery, you get veins that are richer in zinc, like our Eva style, and our Svart Leiden is just just on the outside of that, in the sort of in the intermediate ground. So we are working at the moment to try and find the heart of the system, and it's still subject to, to discovery. So we're not saying that we have yet discovered a porphyry copper system, but we are getting very close now. Moving along, uh, it gets worse in terms of presenting the plate tectonic model. But the point of the, uh, the map, this is the geological map of Sweden in this part of the world, and you can see that we are here, um, and the Schlefte Belt is to the south of us, where Borleden have a string of small deposits, uh, none of them reaching any more than uh, 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 maybe 20, 20 million tons, Rakiawa, for example, although that's pretty low grade. Um, and the, the lava project of Borleden lies to the northeast of us, approximately 60 kilometers away, and that's a recognized, uh, defined porphyry deposit. So there is, there is, a, there is a, a, a growing need to begin to understand the ge this part of the geology of Sweden, and it begins with companies like ourselves opening up the, the knowledge base or the discovery of these uh, various entities, and we will be able to expand, one would hope, and to find more, and there is no doubt that that the news of discovery of porphyry copper gold systems here in Scandinavia will lift this industry through the roof. You know, the world over, this is the big elephants. This is the, this is the systems that scientists and uh, economists are hoping for, you know. Um, so, <clears throat> and of course, it's in a very good jurisdiction, and we've got very good laws here, we've got good infrastructure. Um, there's every good reason why we should be here in in Sweden, and the Canadians have dominated the, the market down the years on TSXV, thousands of exploration companies making good progress around the world and in their country over, and I guess my vision is that, that we can do the same here in Sweden, and we can really unlock the potential of the country and find the resources that are here so that we can manage them upwards uh, professionally and responsibly. Uh, to build the industries of the future that we need to now do. 
So that's a, a geological map of the region. Of course, talking about our nearest neighbors uh, in the north, in, in terms of porphyry copper anyway, that's the Aitik pit, and uh, they've had great success there. That was started in 1968. And so porphyry copper is not a, is not a new phenomenon, but uh, certainly uh, we're hoping not to create a massive hole in the ground like that. We will look at this prudently, but the, uh, uh, the work that we've been doing, um, we've used quite a few different uh, uh, techniques, um, and the one is using a very deep sounding electrical, electromagnetic sounding technique, audio magnetic tellurics it's called. So we've, we've had a team recently here, we're busy working with the data, but it's allowing us to see down to a kilometer in the crust to look for conductors. And we're busy modeling that data as we speak and shortly the market will get to hear about our results. And when you see the results, you're gonna see a fairly good three-dimensional graphic presentation of where we believe the heart of the system to be, which is what we will drill there afterwards. So I guess in conclusion, uh, I see I'm over time, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, th I think the highlight is, is, is that the company's focus is uh, trying to integrate all of this geological data uh, around the, 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 the concept that we have here, a, a porphyry style uh, mineralization system. Um, it's backed up by the extensive uh, historic database that we have. Um, it's in the correct uh, particular terrain. Uh, we have these metal zonation patterns that are very indicative of such a system being in place. And uh, we're currently evaluating that using three-dimensional modeling. Um, and the results will be released probably mid-December by the time we finish with all of that. And thereafterwards, we'll be going into drilling, which is fully funded as I stand here. So that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chris. Uh, take a seat in the middle chair, and we'll start the Q&A. Uh, if you do have a question, raise your hand, and don't be shy about your English. Post it in Swedish if you'd like, and we do our best to translate. Um, but I'll start, since I'm here. So my first question is if you could you know, Give some sort of timeline from where you are now to when there will be a resource estimation or something of that y yeah. sort. Yeah, this is, uh, it's always a very good question. People want to know how long is a piece of string <laughs> and uh, how much money are you going to need uh, to use to get there. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say that uh, realistically through 2018, um, our program of uh, work that we intend to do uh, will generate the first uh, pass of the scale of the project, the resource potential, as we would say. Mm. Um, um, and there afterwards, through 19 and, and the year 20, uh, we would be building up to what we call indicated resources, which is a particular uh, uh, density of uh, drilling information that would allow us to carry out uh, economic uh, studies. There are, there are rules and guidelines in our industry that are very uh, uh, particular. So uh, one shouldn't uh, speculate on the potential economic outcome uh, prematurely. Mm -hmm. So I would say that within three years uh, would be the right answer that we would have a, a very good handle on the, on the, on the uh, macroeconomics of a new mine potential in Northern Adirondo project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's, it's a lot of hard work and it's obviously a results dependent business too as well. So uh, we need to manage the risks and uh, we also need to manage the, re the rewards from our, our investigations as they come through. But I think to give uh, a fair guidance here, I would say uh, 12 months for the complete discovery package and, a, and a, two years after that for a, a full economic uh, statement of what the potential is here on this property. And uh, yeah, I don't know, does that set it? And then obviously to develop beyond that, uh, you know, it's difficult to say right now, but oh. there will be various phases of feasibility and considerations. Uh, and that's not just a, a geological study, that's, that's considering everything. Everybody's interest need to be looked at. Um, and how, we, how do we develop the mines of Sweden in the future? Uh, and 
and our business view is, is that we're going to walk this road. We, we're, not in the, we're not leaving. I'm not leaving. People often talk about FIFO, fly in, fly out. Well, I flew in, and I haven't flown out yet, right? So we're here for the long road, yeah. Uh, any questions from the audience? Oh. No? <laughs> well, you can uh, ask me a technical question. Somebody has to ask me about what's a porphyry. <laughs> uh, I'll, t I'll take uh, the next one then. Uh, okay. The financing that you do have uh, right now, how far along this route does that take you? Well, I would say that, uh, as I say, we're on the brink of discovery now. Mm. I, I would say that in the coming uh, year, and, 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 and that's putting it, as I say, to the full maxima. You know, there always comes a moment when you drill a few holes and those are the holes that count. Mm. And it would be fair to say that to date, uh, we're still waiting for this moment. That's why discovery is, uh, is, a, is, is the real hard part of mineral exploration. And n knowing which is the right hole, it's difficult. But in terms of our deep hole uh, campaign, We've done three earlier this year, mm. and that's given us an insight as to where to go look next and to what to do next. So we've taken time out uh, to, to do the geophysical surveys, but we've also had to bring in new technology to do this. It wasn't available here uh, to do that. Mm. So these, uh, these steps, they take some time, but I, I, I guess we're optimists. You know, geologists are always optimists, and we have to be because... Uh, yeah. Why would we get out of bed in the morning and do this? We have to be believing in, in, the, in the concept of discovery. So it's, it's coming soon, I would say. And it's really not my place to say exactly what date mm. or which drill hole, whatever. But we've set a course now that will, uh, that will come out with the finite answer. And we'll face that as a company together. Um, as to what it is that we've discovered, and we have the means to, to manage the result, oh. if you know what I mean. As soon as possible, according to NASDAQ rules. Mm. As soon as possible. <laughs> Got it. Huh? Yes. Yeah. Did you understand the question? Yeah, I do roughly uh, well, understand, I, uh, but maybe just to make sure I get it exactly. But it's the uh, giving an overview of the the exploration expenditure plans. Uh, given given an overview of the uh, exploration data that you bought from Lundin. Yeah, the Lundin. Uh, that's what. Yeah. Uh, that, that's what I said. Yeah. yeah, the Lundin data set. Um, uh, was was a, was part of the 33 kilometers, 33 and a half kilometers of drilling, uh, core drilling that was stored at the uh, the SGU in Marlow. So, from 2004 to 2007, um, that was managed by a company called North Atlantic Natural Resources, who were in partnership with Ball Eden back then, and that company drilled uh, 138 drill holes. Uh, to a tune of approximately 22,000 meters of drilling. And they had roughly four and a half, five thousand 5,000 samples within that data set. And uh, their, their method of approach was to, to, to really look for what they call uh, volcanogenic massive sulfide, or VMS, which is this, the, the uh, if you like, the, the foreseen style of mineralization back then. So the database before then was Bull Eden, and that was in the 1970s, and that was 109 drill holes. Um, so it was 247 holes approximately, um, and pr approximately 33 kilometers of drilling. But the deepest uh, drilling uh, was, 
Well, let's say on average it ranged from approximately 150 meters to 300 meters below surface. Um, and, but, but a lot of it was uh, not assessed for the porphyry copper potential. So uh, there were a number of drill holes that I found that hadn't been completely assayed, for example. Uh, we've taken a lot of care to go and find all of these drill holes to validate this database. A tremendous amount of effort was made, and it's, it's, it's just different, different eyes looking at the same information presents a new case for exploration here. Uh, we run out of time. Uh, Chris will be available for further questions yeah. outside at the company corner. Uh, and uh, we will now take a short break and we'll be ready with a new presentation in about 10 minutes.